Welcome to Immunology. I'm Rebecca Smith, your Immunology instructor online this quarter. I'm very excited to have this course. I've had many of you for Clinical Chemistry 1 and clin Clinical Chemistry 2, which I love, but I'm extremely passionate about immunology. Um, a lot of exciting things to be learned here and so many things coming down um, the pikes with the invol or the the new research that's being done with immunology. So I love learning new things and the changes that are happening. So I really think you guys are going to enjoy this course. A uh, lot of very exciting things to learn about how your body fights off infection and um, some of the things that are up and coming with it. So let's get started. Okay, history of immunology. Louis Pasteur is considered our father of immunology. He is responsible for making a live and attenuated um, chicken cholera, rabies, and anthrax vaccines. Um, while there are people that made some types of vaccines before him, he was the one who did uh, some very amazing research in the terms of these live and attenuated vaccines. A live vaccine is something where they actually inject you with small amounts of the live uh, agent that could make you sick, whether it be a virus or bacteria. Attenuated is sort of a, a live um, form of that organism, but it's been attenuated or decreased in strength. I guess you could put it that way. If you read your book, um, it, you'll notice that Jenner came around first, and one of the things that always kind of cracks me up about Jenner is he did the smallpox vaccine, which is very important, right? Because that was wiping out quite a bit of our population. Well, how he started vaccinating people was taking, picking the scabs off of people with smallpox, grinding it up, and having people snort that scab crust from those smallpox. So that's kind of interesting um, trivia there. So here it goes back to Jenner, all the way back to 1798 with the smallpox vaccination. You do not have to memorize this list. It just goes all the way up to, well, it goes up to 2005 here um, in, in all the different things that have happened over time. So we got our smallpox um, up here. Uh, Pasteur came along with the anthrax vaccine, and then he came along even further with the uh, rabies vaccine. As we move on, we learn more about hypersensitivity and anaphylaxis, which is important because people were dying from food-related allergies. Um, we learn more about the arthritis versus the immediate hypersensitivity, allograft rejections, so talking about organ transplant. We had a polio vaccine, which was very important in 1949, yellow fever vaccines. Uh, we learned about human leukocyte antigens, which are huge when it comes to um, you know, organ transplant and things like that. We'll get into more um, detail with that. And it wasn't that long ago that T-cell and B-cell cooperation immune responses were discovered. Uh, move on to monoclonal antibodies, hepatitis B vaccines. Didn't come around until 1986, if you can believe it. Um, those of us that were born before that probably didn't get our hepatitis B vaccines until much later in life. And then we have some other uh, Fox P3 regulatory T-cells. Those are all with organ transplant causing people who are getting transplantations and things to have a better success rate. And a lot of us are familiar with some of the controversy and things going on with the development of the human papillomavirus vaccine in 2005 and um, whether they are effective and giving them to children of relatively young ages. Human papillomavirus, is otherwise known as HPV, um, can cause cervical cancer. All right, so let's talk about the meat of immunology. What is immunology? Immunology is defined as the study of the molecules, cells, organs, and systems responsible for the recognition and disposal of foreign non-self materials. So obviously something enters your body, we don't want it in there, our body hopefully can come together and destroy it. We also look at how body components respond and interact. We're going to have probably the first four weeks, five weeks of talking about how our body fights these things off. And then starting week six, we're going to go into detail on different diseases and exactly how our body fights those off. That's my favorite. Then we have desirable and undesirable consequences of immune interactions. Do you ever hear of autoimmune disease, lupus, Sjogren's, multiple sclerosis, you know, those types of things are very undesirable and unfortunate. We'll learn how those diseases work and how um, we're, what we're doing to try and make lives better for those people. And the ways in which the immune system can be advantageously manipulated to protect against or, or treat disease. 
So um, we can try and increase the immune system or unfortunately there are weight things that decrease our immune system such as HIV and AIDS. All right, so when we look at the immune system, the distinctive characteristics include having specificity. You want it to be specific and fight off things that it needs to fight off, not just be willy-nilly and fight off who knows what. There are some cases where it's not specific enough and it starts fighting off things that we, we would don't want them to fight off. It needs to have a good memory, so once you get the chicken pox, hopefully you never get it again. It needs to have mobility. Can it travel through your tissues and get to your skin? Can it make it from your mucous membranes um, back into your tissues or from your tissues to your mucous membranes where it can help fight off infection there? Can it replicate effectively? And is there cooperation between different cells and cellular products? So you need all these things to be able to happen in order for your immune system to function efficiently. So the function of the immune system is to recognize self from non-self and to defend the body against non-self. Okay, so you want your body to know what itself is, and you also want to be to be able to defend itself against things that are entering. One unfortunate issue is organ transplantation. Your body's not dumb. It knows that that kidney you're getting from somebody else is not yours, so it tries to get rid of it. And unfortunately, there's many drugs that have to be taken to try and stop that from happening, and we do as much testing as we can to make sure that there is a good recipient and um, transplant going on. Immunity definition is the process of being protected from foreign antigens. And here's an important definition to know. Someone who has a deficiency or damage to the immune system is considered immunocompromised. Okay, Immunocompromised means that you have an issue. People that might be immunocompromised are cancer patients because they're taking um, chemotherapy which kills their white cells with fight, which fight off infection. Um, uh, HIV patient, okay, human immunodeficiency virus, um, could be immunocompromised. Um, and there's some other issues too that we'll learn about going forward, but those are two that you're probably familiar with at this point. So here are some of your body's defenses to microbial disease. First things are things that are exposed to the outside environment. Your skin can help protect you, your eyes, mucous membranes, respiratory tract has mucus in it. Your digestive system has ways. Actually, majority of your um, immune system is found in your gut, which I found to be very interesting. And we'll, I've got some fun information to teach you guys later on about that. And the urogenital tract. We obviously don't want bacteria entering that way either. So once again, first line of defense, unbroken skin and mucous membrane surfaces, secretions, the physical ability to wash away potential pathogens, and chemical properties of tears and saliva. There's an enzyme in your tears called lysozyme. It's also in your saliva, and it attacks and destroys foreign organisms before they have a chance to wreak some havoc. Then we have IgA. That is an immunoglobulin. We'll learn more about those. It's an antibody, per se. It's um, very highly present in tears and saliva as well. We're going to talk about a couple of the body's defenses here, natural and adaptive immunity. The first one we're going to talk about is natural immunity. This is what you are born with. It's also called innate or inborn. It's nonspecific. Cellular and humoral defenses are activated. So there's a difference between innate or natural cellular and natural humoral. Natural cellular, you're born with these cells, mast cells, neutrophils, and macrophages. You're born with those. Those have the ability to be phagocytic and engulf or eat foreign material. Okay, so you're born with that. Those cells are just able to do that. Then you have humoral components, which are not cells, that you're born with. Complement, lysozyme, and interferon. We talked about lysozyme found in tears and saliva. Complement are components that help do the final destruction of a foreign organism. And interferon are viral antibiotics per se. So you're born with those three item, items as well, okay? Those are the cellular and humoral components that you're born with. You have to memorize that. Then we have adaptive immunity, otherwise known as acquired. So after the baby's born, you know, they're usually nursed by their mother or, or something where they get additional antibodies from mom. But after a while, they have to start adapting to the environment on their own, which is why it's called the adaptive or acquired immunity. This one is specific. 
So once a baby becomes exposed to a Staph aureus bacteria, their body starts to make antibodies to that Staph aureus bacteria. There are different things involved in this acquired immunity. It, um, the cellular component here is T lymphocytes, B lymphocytes, and plasma cells. Those are all cellular components that are adaptive. Those cells are what create a memory and secrete antibodies after you've been exposed to something. The humoral adaptive are antibodies and cytokines. Antibodies are created once it sees, and we'll talk about this more next week, it'll see that you have um, been exposed before, so it'll start making antibodies to it right away. The humoral component, oh yeah, this, and cytokines, sorry, the humoral cytokines are um, chemical messengers that allow cells to talk to each other. Here's a reminder, lymphocytes are stored in secondary lymph nodes such as um, lymph, lymph nodes, spleens, and tonsils. So that's where they kind of um, keep a home for a while. So here's the chart, If for those of you that like um, chart types of things. Humoral mediated immunity refers to things like um, antibodies, B lymphocytes, antibodies in the serum, and its purpose is to defend against bacterial infection. Cell mediated refers to more T lymphocytes, direct cell to cell contact or defect, defense against viral and fungal infections. Here's another important thing that we need to know. Comparison of different types of acquired immunity. Active natural, something that could be an active natural type of immunity would be an infection. So actually getting the chicken pox virus is active natural immunity. Active artificial is getting the vaccine to the chicken pox. Passive natural is something like um, the transfer of um, colostrum, like mom nursing. Passive artificial would be taking serum or plasma and infusing it into somebody to help them out. For example, if somebody's been exposed to a patient's blood that has hepatitis in it, we can actually take hepatitis antibodies and inject them into that person to prevent them from getting hepatitis B. So here is um, another type of issue we see with immunity is hypersensitivity. Um, if you know anybody that's allergic to bees or has a food allergy, they would fall into this category. It's most commonly associated with anaphylactic reactions. Anaphylactic reactions are those severe uh, bee sting allergies where they have to use an EpiPen and whatnot. So this is an overreaction of the immune system. It's usually mediated by immunoglobulin E, which is a type of an antibody. There's usually exposure to the antigen, which would be, for example, a bee sting. Development of an IgE antibody response. It binds to mast cells, and it releases chemicals that give them the itchy and the swelling and things like that. And we'll have a whole chapter on that in the future. So just a review of the innate versus the adaptive immunity. The innate immune system is an ancient form of host defense. It's been there for a long time. It uses something called PAMPs, pathogen-associated molecular patterns which help, the help that immune system recognize that that's foreign. So all types of staph bacteria, usually like a staph aureus bacteria and, um, I don't know, strep, etc., have a certain molecular pattern on the surface that your body recognizes and destroys it. That's called a pathogen-associated molecular pattern, sometimes called toll-like receptors. Your body just knows to look for that pattern. If it has it, it destroys it. The mechanism of the immune immunity and innate immunity includes phagocytes, which is like eating like Pac-Man, and they're, um, it's activ activated immediately after um, infection and quickly becomes, uh, be controls the multiplication of those microorganisms. And then the adaptive immunity happens over time around the T cells and B cells, um, and it involves clonal selection. So in individual lymph encounters an antigen that binds to its unique receptor site, proliferation of that occurs and more are made. I have kind of a cute little video here that I'm going to include in your um, um, course announcement as well. Sometimes I have a hard time getting the, um, the sound to play, but we're going to go ahead and try this here and see what happens. Bear with me here.
Okay, well this isn't working. I'm going to um, put this in your course announcement um, in the middle of week one, so you'll have a chance to watch that. Sorry about that. It worked before for me. All right, so here's a review of the components of the immune system. You're going to want to make note cards out of these. They will be on a quiz and an exam coming up. Will be. Not might, will. So a mast cell produces heparin, histamine, and serotonin. Heparin and histamine are what makes you itchy, sneezy. Okay, so when you get exposed to hay fever in the springtime and you start sneezing like crazy, mast cells and, um, and IgE are responsible for that. Neutrophils, highly destructive against microorganisms. They do phagocytosis. Macrophages also have phagocytosis and perform the antigen presenting function. Complement is a system of proteins that react in a cascade to a cell displaying immune complexes. It helps destroy by poking a hole in the cell wall. We'll talk about that week five, but you're going to have to know the definition before then. Lysozyme is found in tears and saliva. It helps it destroy bacteria, etc. Interferon destroys virally infected cells. The major histocompatibility complex um, is involved in organ transplantation, making yourself recognize itself as self. T cells are in cell mediated immunity. B cells make antibodies. Antibodies identify and neutralize foreign objects such as bacteria and viruses. And cytokines are kind of the chemical messenger that aid in the development of the adaptive and immune response. Okay, so just make sure you're familiar with those definitions along with a few other things. Make sure that you watch the chapter six safety section um, after you watch this section. Thank you.